Recently, I held an Instagram poll and I said that you guys can ask any questions, whether it's academic related or it can be personal questions or random questions. And you guys have done just that. So I'm going to split the questions into two videos. In this video, it will just be about the academic related ones. And in the next video, it will be the personal or random questions. So let's start with the first question, which multiple people have asked. After secondary school, what is the recommended path? Should I go to JC or Poly? So let me give you a flow chart so you can make this decision. Question number one, do I really want to go to either JC or Poly? So if you really want to go to one of them already, then just choose that. You don't need to wait for other people to give you permission. If you already know exactly what you want, if you already are 90% sure that you want one of them, then just choose that. Question number two, do I really want a specific course? If yes, then choose Poly because Poly can offer you specific courses. But if no, then proceed to question three. Question three is, well, if you don't know what you want, then ask yourself this, will I be able to do well in JC? And how you can predict that is, how were you like with secondary school? If you're okay, okay with secondary school again but now on steroids meaning it's more intensive there's more content and you like the format so far you think you can handle it then just choose JC. In general JC is good for people who don't know what they want yet and who have been quite good at studying so far whereas poly is great for people who know exactly what they want to do. And just a reminder never compromise on your decision solely for the sake of opening more doors at the expense of your own happiness or at the expense of liking what you're studying. Let me tell you a story that I think would be relevant to you. So when my sister was sec 4 and and she was going to finish sec 4, she faced pressure from both of my parents to go to JC, which I think many of you can relate to. But then I told her that honestly, because I already went through JC, I feel it wouldn't be a good fit for her. I feel like she would struggle in JC. In the end, she did choose poly and she went to a course that she really likes, which is art. And she's actually doing well in it. It turns out she always liked art. She's always been drawing on her own and doing something despite no one telling her or forcing her to do that. And so when you find such a course, you would usually fit right into it. So the moral of the story is this don't follow the societal pressure just because people say oh this is what you should do it may not be the best decision for you so make your own decisions but they should be sound and based on logic you must have thought it through carefully if people still disagree after that then just let them so for example many people warned me against being a tutor but starting that bio tutor was one of the best decisions i've made in my life i'll give you another story about choosing the right poly course so i had this friend who was very into planes and aerospace engineering and he went to that poly course but then it turns out that he was terrible in the physics and math part of it because it was much more advanced compared to secondary school. And so he was struggling in that for one to two years until he finally dropped out and he changed course to sports science. And it turns out that he's always been interested in sports science, always watching YouTube videos, learning about the human body, exercise science, even though no one forced him to. And now guess what? He's acing it. He's near the top of his class because he already liked to do that and was already good at it by this time. Hey guys, so the daylight got too dark and it was very hard to shoot the video, which is why I'm continuing today. How is bio in JC like? Is the memorizing unbearable? So the short answer is that there is a lot more content and a lot more to memorize. So it is a lot harder. If you know you hate that kind of thing, if you already hate the fact that bio has so much to memorize and you don't enjoy it, then do not take bio in JC. But I want to tell you why many people may enjoy it, myself included. Let me give you an analogy, right? When I was much younger, I used to play with Rubik's Cubes and I actually got really interested in speed cubing, meaning solving it as fast as possible and it got to an average of 15 seconds but in order to get that fast right you have to memorize a lot of things you have to memorize formulas like recognize the pattern and then execute the formula it's a series of moves and so if i see a pattern like this right then i do this and then it will get to a solved state. This is like JC Bio. See, if you feel that the outcome is worth it, even though the memorizing is tedious and hard and there's so many things to memorize, so many keywords, right? But if you like learning about Bio, then I think you won't find it a chore. To you, it will be worth it to learn all that. And for myself in JC, I saw it as just acquiring new Bio knowledge and that was nice to me. Is triple science worth it? So if you are open to all three sciences, meaning you don't particularly dislike any of them, then just do it first, okay? You can always drop it later if you find out that you really don't like one of them. Now if you already know that you really hate one of them and you don't want to take it but people are pressuring you to take it. Maybe it's peer pressure, maybe your parents are pressuring you because like it will open up more options or something but you already know you definitely hate it then just don't take it. Unless it's chemistry then in that case you've got no choice. Can I do bio in JC if my chem sucks? Yes, good news is you can. It barely affects your bio although there is some chemistry in the JC bio syllabus but it is still very much the bio that you think about in O levels. It's just that there's a lot more content. So if you're good at bio in secondary school but not good at chemistry especially the math side of chemistry 
then yeah, you can still do very well in JC Bio. How to use your holidays wisely if you are set for next year. The reason why we always waste so much time in our holidays and be so unproductive is because there is a lack of structure and routine. Think about it, during the holidays, there's no school. And that means that every day you don't have to wake up at a certain time. You don't have to go to school and kind of get forced to learn and be productive. And there is no homework that you need to submit very quickly. It's usually a few months later. And so without structure, we tend to waste a lot of time. So my remedy to this would be to implement routine into your holidays. For example, if you want to exercise, you want to make gymming a thing, then set certain days and times of the week to exercise. Another example is you allocate every day 10 to 1 p.m. for studying or revising or doing the holiday homework. Then the rest of the day, you do whatever you want, free time, go out with friends and so on. I think that way you will find yourself a lot more productive and a lot more guilt-free of how you spend your holidays. Now, if you're specifically thinking about pure bio and revising for that during the holidays, then one way to have sure structure is if you join our class during our December period, you will have a class every week plus homework to do. How do you figure out what could one's future job be and how to set goals for that? Okay, first I'll ask you what are you already learning about? What are you already searching on YouTube and watching videos in your free time even though no one is telling you to do that, even though no one is forcing you to learn that? So those are the things you're naturally interested already and I would say play to your strengths and play to your interests. Another thing is that you need to actually try out these interests as a career for a short period of time. Have you ever seen a cake or a dessert that you thought would taste nice. And on the outside, it looks great. But once you actually taste it, it disappoints you. So it's the same for choosing jobs and careers also. When I was in SEC4, I thought of maybe being a researcher as one of my options for careers. Then I tried a work attachment for two weeks at a research lab. And after the two weeks, I was quite sure I didn't want to do research work because to me, it wasn't exciting enough. I had to look under a microscope for quite long, collect data, write data down, and it just wasn't that exciting to me. So just like the dessert, you won't know whether you want to pursue that until you do a short tryout period. And how to get those work attachments is you go ask around your contacts and tell them, hey, I'd like to work for free at your workplace for one or two weeks. And usually their boss will be quite happy to hear that, right? Because you are coming to work for free over there. How to prepare your portfolio, especially if you're set for next year. So when people think of portfolio, they think of like, oh, you must have so many competitions on your portfolio and make yourself look so good. But to be honest, just play to your strengths join the competitions only if you're truly interested. I know some people sign up for like tons of competitions just so that they can make their portfolio look better. But honestly, it wastes a lot of time. And if you see a lot of just participation medals or certs on your portfolio, it doesn't look that great either. Next, I would get work attachments, especially if I am gunning for a certain body course that I know I'm interested in. Then I will find work attachments related to that one. And here's the most important one. Do very well in your exams. It's so obvious, right? But it's the number one thing that they look at when they consider you for either JC or a poly. It doesn't matter which one you go. Having the good grades in the O levels will help you so much. It is the foundation, right? All the other stuff are just icing on the cake. So if I were you, the biggest way I would improve my portfolio is just make sure I'm studying well. Why do I keep getting C5 despite studying so hard for bio? There are usually two main problems that students fall into. So problem number one is a content problem that you don't really know what you're studying, don't really understand it. And then in those application questions, that's where you die. Second problem is that your content's actually okay, but you are not hitting the right keywords. And so that's why in the open-ended questions, you cannot score. In our class, I train our students to keep hitting those keywords. We go through OEQs together and I show them the thought process behind it. Right now, I would suggest to this person to make sure they got our free notes, study the content using the chapter notes, and then for the OEQs, look at the commonly asked questions parts where I bowl all the keywords and really learn from those. If you're familiar with that, it will help you with the answering questions part. How does the bell curve work in the O levels? To be honest, I do not know the exact mechanics of how it works, but I've heard from teachers in MOE that this is how it works. They will look at the past year paper and try and match the standard. So example, if past year's paper was much harder, this year everyone will get higher grades, right? But they won't just let it be like that. They would try and moderate to match those grades, okay? Imagining if it was like last year's standard. So they would account for the differences in difficulty of paper. And the result of that is that 75 may not equal to A1. And if you get 70%, it may not equal to A2 and so on. So the gradings will be adjusted accordingly to what they deem is fair compared to the last year's difficulty. So this is not the exact same as a bell curve because for a bell curve, it means that only a certain percent of students can get the A1, whereas everyone else will kind of suffer because they're not the top 10% or whatever percentage. But this one is not like that. A lot of people still can get A1. 
It's just that it is now based on a past year's reference of difficulty and it's not purely based on the absolute value of the score. So once again, this is all I know. This is my guess and my opinion. Don't take my word for it that this is exactly how it works. But anyway, don't worry about the bell curve for all levels. What you should worry about is what you can control, which is are you getting the best score you possibly can? I noticed that different bio textbooks and different notes say different things. So which source is most reliable? Okay, talk about textbook first, right? 2024 onwards pure bio syllabus has been updated and the new textbook is the pink one, which looks like this, the pink one. Okay, so do not use the second edition, use the third edition. Second edition is outdated now. And then as for the notes, right? Different bio notes are put together by different people. And what I would recommend is using our 2024 updated notes. Okay, the link is tinyurl.com slash tbt notes. I agree that different people have different opinions, which is why I checked the textbook. I checked the official learning outcomes from SEAB. I asked MOE teachers' opinions and I also poll you guys frequently on Instagram and my own students to ask you, hey, what do your schools teach about this topic? And so this helps me to get the best idea of what is truly important to learn and that's how I create our notes. When do the signups for 2024 open? Okay, good news, they've just opened and you can go to tinyurl.com slash tbt signups. Our classes will start at the last week of November or the first week of December, depending on which days our students say that they most want to have lessons on. I'm also planning to have both online and physical options this year. So if you're planning to sign up, then go ahead and sign up first come first serve.